The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I decided on this Reformation Sunday to give you the point up front of what Jesus says in today's gospel. Here it is Jesus wants you to be a Lutheran. Now, I see the look of consternation on some of your faces. Pastor, I thought that Jesus just wants me to be a Christian. And then, when you're a Christian, you can just pick whatever flavor of Christianity that you like, be it Lutheran or Roman Catholic or Baptist or what have you. The only thing Jesus really cares about is that you're in church, right? Well, allow me to explain. First, a story. 503 years ago, this upcoming Saturday, a German monk nailed 95 theses, or items for debate, to the door of the castle church in Wittenberg, Saxony. The subject of his 95 theses were the sale of indulgences by the Roman Catholic Church of his day. Now, this German monk, who was growing in his understanding of God's grace in Christ, just couldn't square the sale of indulgences with what he read in Holy Scripture. Eventually, sometime after the 95 Theses, this monk made a discovery while he was reading the Bible. He was reading these words, which are found in the prophet Habakkuk and also in St. Paul. The righteous shall live by faith. Now he learned from these words that God makes sinners righteous, not by works, not by indulgences, but by faith alone, as we heard in St. Paul's epistle to the Romans. For we hold that one is justified, made righteous, by faith apart from works of the law. Now this discovery changed the life of this monk forever, and it also changed the entire history of the church of the European continent, and of the world. Now, when the monk made this discovery, he knew for the first time that he was free. He was free from the condemnation of the law. He was free from the power of sin, death, and the devil. He was a new man. And because he was a new man, he changed his name. Now, originally, this monk's name had been Martin Luder, L-U-D-E-R. But from now on, he was Martin Luther. He took the name Luther from the Greek word eleutheros, which means free. And this is the same word, eleutheros, in the verb form that Jesus uses in today's gospel when he says, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. The truth will make you a Lutheros. The truth will make you a Lutheran. You get it? There's only one way to be truly free, to be released from sin and death, and that's by knowing the truth. That knowledge, which we call faith, is a gift from God. And having faith is not simply having something generic to believe in. But true saving faith requires the right object. 
It requires that we must hold on to the only true Savior, Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus alone, by his cross, has accomplished our salvation, not because we deserve it, but because we need it. Before, we were slaves to sin. But then the Son of God came into our flesh. He came in order that he might set free the slaves to sin and make them his brothers, fellow sons of God, so that they might abide in his Father's house, in his kingdom forever. To remain in God's house, we must do as Jesus says, abide in my word. And that brings us back to the wonderful gift that it is to be a Lutheran. Now I know, and you know, that in our day, it's not polite and it's not fashionable to say that one church is better than another. Often, we think of churches like clubs. Just be a member of whichever you like, and don't put down somebody else's club. But the Church of Jesus Christ is not a club. The church is Jesus' body. The church is the community of all the redeemed, all the saints. It is a sad thing that churches are divided today. From an institutional point of view, Luther's Reformation caused a schism within the Roman Catholic Church that as of today has still not been healed. And since the Reformation, many other Protestant churches have sprung up as well. And they all exist apart from the Lutheran Church because they think that Luther's Reformation did not go far enough. And what those other churches have done inadvertently is to throw out many of the scriptural teachings which the Lutherans retained and held on to. And this is why the Lutheran Church is so concerned with doctrine. We are concerned with preserving the teaching of the Bible right down to details that make many modern people, including some Lutherans, rather uncomfortable. We continue to offer Holy Communion only to those who have been instructed in and have publicly confessed our doctrine. We continue to uphold the order of creation, recognizing the God-given distinctions between man and woman and what that means for marriage and for the ordination of qualified men only to the office of the Holy Ministry. And if you've heard the news this past week, Regardless of the personal opinions of Pope Francis, we pray especially today that the Roman Catholic Church would continue to stand strong on upholding the biblical teaching on human sexuality. We also continue to insist that no one may preach or administer the sacrament unless he is called and ordained. And we continue to worship according to the historic liturgy, of which our Lutheran confessions say, we do not abolish the Mass, the divine service, but religiously retain and defend it. Among us, the Mass is celebrated every Lord's Day and on other festivals, when the sacrament is made available to those who wish to partake of it, after they have been examined and absolved. We also keep traditional liturgical forms, such as the order of readings, prayers, vestments, and other similar things. The words of the Apology of the Augsburg Confession. Now you might be wondering, what does all of that have to do with being free? Seems like we have a lot of rules. Aren't rules the opposite of freedom? Now consider again what Jesus says. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The Lutheran Reformation is built on the word. The word of God gives life. 
to receive life from God's word is what it means to abide in Jesus' word. And so it is that we must carefully guard what we teach and what we practice. Because if you mix in just a little bit of false teaching, or you compromise here, or you compromise there, then what you have is not the whole truth. It's something else. Before you know it, the saving truth of the gospel is lost. And that's what happened before the Reformation. In the Middle Ages, one error led to another until the saving gospel of Jesus Christ was unrecognizable because it was crowded out by the papacy, by a bloated hierarchy, by the sale of indulgences, and by devotion to Mary and the saints, rather than devotion to the triune God alone. The freedom of the gospel is almost entirely lost because the church was enslaved to man-made teachings rather than the word of God. That is the slavery from which we have been freed. Freedom is not the ability to do whatever you want to do. Freedom is being liberated from the enemies of God, including our own sinful flesh, by Christ our Lord. And so to guard and preserve that freedom, we teach and believe the whole counsel of God right down to the details. And we worship according to the old forms of the Holy Catholic Church, minus the medieval errors, because these forms derive their power from the Word. Our liturgy, which we use today, is beautiful and powerful because it is shaped by the word of Jesus, which alone gives life and freedom. So does that mean that we pat ourselves on the back today for being Lutheran? Not quite. On this Reformation Sunday, we do thank and praise God for the continual work of Reformation accomplished by his Holy Spirit in the church. We thank God for Martin Luther and for all our faithful teachers. But above all, we commit ourselves to the word alone. We judge all things, our doctrine, our tradition, and our practice by God's holy word. That word of God accomplishes that for which God speaks it. And so abide in the word. For it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. And so, in the name of Jesus, by his blood and death, by the triumph of his resurrection, by the power of his Holy Spirit at work in word and sacrament, by grace alone, through faith alone, in him alone, you are free. Amen.